So today is a really special episode of Bio Corner because it is our first ever fan question episode. It comes from my really good friend Jessica, and so here is a recording of our conversation earlier this morning discussing her question. Also, yay, Hufflepuff flag, represent! Yes. Yes! So my question to you is, how do people end up with different colored eyes? I've seen, like, of course, in photographs and on TV and stuff, that people have different colored eyes. And I know that it's possible, but I also know that it's super rare. So I'm just wondering what makes that happen? So the condition that Jessica is describing is known as heterochromia iridis. Hetero and chrome being the Greek roots for different and color, and iridis referring to the iris or the colored part of your eye. The condition is actually really rare in people and only occurs approximately one in every 200,000 people. So how does heterochromia happen? Well, there are four main ways in humans. The two major ones are either through an injury to the eye or as a symptom of a disease or condition. The other two less common ways are either through chimerism or a spontaneous mutation. So let's talk about injury first. Injury can take place either before or after someone is born and can be from really mild injuries. In the case of before or very shortly after birth, an injury to the eye can either block or damage unique cells called melanocytes. Melanocytes produce a compound called melanin, and melanin is responsible for the pigment or color of your hair, skin, and eyes. And the more melanin your cells produce, the darker your hair, skin, and eyes are likely to be. So kind of a weird thing about melanocytes is they're actually originally made in the spinal cord of a developing embryo. So that means because we don't have eyes or hair growing out of our spine, they have to travel as the embryo develops to get to the places they actually need to be. And by the way, melanocytes are not the only cells to go through this process of growing in the spinal cord and then migrating elsewhere. Neurons and glia, which make up huge portions of the nervous system, also go through this same process of developing in the spinal cord and then traveling throughout the embryo as it grows. So the point is melanocytes need to migrate. And if they get damaged during this migration process, then they may only make it to one or potentially neither of your eyes. And if this happens and your eyes receive different amounts of melanocytes or basically pigment, then they will be two different colors and one will appear darker than the other. Now, if injury takes place during childhood or adulthood and the iris darkens as a result, this isn't because melanocytes are damaged or blocked from reaching the eye, because remember, that whole process takes place just before or right after birth. Instead, if the eye is damaged later on in life and the iris darkens, this is because blood is deposited into the eye. And that blood being deposited can cause one eye to darken and the other to not. So then you have two different colored eyes. So I mentioned before that heterochromia can also be a symptom of a few different disorders, including Warnberg, Perry romberg Horner's, and Sturge-Weber syndrome. And all of these syndromes affect either the skin or the nervous system and have a lot of other symptoms that go along with them, not just heterochromia. But if someone has heterochromia and isn't diagnosed with any of these syndromes, odds are they're perfectly healthy and totally fine. It's really benign, it's just two different colored eyes. So those are the two more common ways for someone to be born with heterochromia. And one of the more rare ways is through a phenomenon called chimerism. So chimerism is the result of two fertilized eggs fusing together, resulting in one person being born instead of two. They discovered that I had resorbed the other fetus. And in this case, if one fertilized egg has the instructions to make blue eyes and the other has the instructions to make brown eyes, then you could end up with someone who has one blue eye and one brown eye because one eye is expressing the blue eye instructions and the other eye is expressing the brown eye instructions. And the final 
way that someone can be born with heterochromia is if they have a random mutation in one of the genes encoding for eye color. So mutations can be caused by a lot of different things, but in this case, it's usually due to the cell just completely misreading its own genetic code. So those are the most common ways for humans to have heterochromia, and it's usually not passed on from parents to children. But that's not the case with dogs. Lots of dog breeds, including Huskies and Australian Shepherds, have heterochromia and it can actually be passed on from parents to puppies. And because it can be passed on, it is a lot more common in dogs and why you're, you've probably seen a dog with heterochromia, but maybe not a person. And in addition to being able to pass heterochromia on from parents to puppies, dogs can also develop heterochromia for all the exact same reasons as people. So those are the main things to know about heterochromia. But before we go, here is a list of some famous people who've had it. Christopher Walken, Mila Kunis, Jane Seymour, Kate Bosworth, Alexander the Great. Actually, no. David Bowie is often a go-to example of heterochromia, but the condition he actually had was anisocoria. So when he was younger, he got into a fight and it injured one of his eyes, causing the pupil to become permanently dilated. This is a type of anisochronia, not the heterochromia we discussed earlier. So his eyes still remained the same color, it's just that in one of them, the pupil was much larger, making the eye look darker than it actually was. All right, that's everything I have for you today. Thank you so much, Jessica, for asking this really interesting question and giving me the opportunity to kind of research this and learn about it myself. And if you liked learning about how people can have two different colored eyes or any of my other videos, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any other biology questions like my friend, go ahead and drop them in the comments and it might get featured in a future video. Bye.